I thought it was uh, more days to uh, before I leaving for Israel, but uh, I got a message from the airplane business in Finland, and they say it was one week left. So I have to be careful now. So I don't uh, I don't uh, miss. Uh, the airplane but I got I should get a message from the taxi that it will come next morning so I have a whole night there to know so that it's only one week it's very close now and um, I'm uh, what I am worried about is uh, uh, the taxi to come in the morning but I also have uh, have uh, ordered the taxi very early so I think I, I should have three hours on the airport but everything can happen so it's good to have much time on the airport and and they are going to check me in and I have assistance so they are coming and take me in a wheelchair and drive me to all the check-in and then they take me to a, a room for those that wait for the assist to come and get us to the airplane. I have done that before. The first time I did it, it was when I fall on the bus and uh, broke one leg and I should go, I should fly to Africa. And I, I have already paid for it and so I couldn't uh, stay home. I have to take the flight. And then I found out there is assistance to get. So I got that. Uh, even if I could walk later on. But uh, I got it in to Kenya. And, um, and uh, then after that I always have taking that because I have not been in good condition. Even if I could walk, I have been too slow to walk uh, the whole distance to uh, the airplane. Because it's some, some kind of strange that my airplane is always the last, longest way to go. And sometimes is it the bus to take to the airplane. So after Africa, I start to get assistance. And now I really need assistance. Uh, but I'm going to walk on the airport anyway when I wait for them because uh, um, I need to have something to eat. Uh, I don't bring with me something to eat because uh, uh, buy food on the airport, airport uh, make some of the waiting time to go away. So uh, I try to do that very slowly. And, um, uh, and I have already taken in my... Uh, check in my my uh, suitcase uh, I only have the little cabin bag to carry and so uh, I don't know it can have changed this with the service on the airport since I was there the last time so um, I I thank you for supporting me 
Okay. And that it doesn't only mean that I can get a little better, that I can take a taxi in Jerusalem to where God wants me to go. And uh, uh, I'm not a tourist in Israel. I, I am there because heaven wants me to come to Israel again for the fourth time. And I have to wait for them to tell me what I am going to do in Israel. I am not a tourist. I am not going with with all those people showing, uh, like I have said, that many of these places is, is fake for people, uh, tourists, to buy this tour. Uh, tours that is to get in uh, in Israel and they have built up something that is not for real but some places are real but many things are fake so I don't go I don't go on the, that anymore I was only on the tour the first time I was in Israel because I didn't know if I could speak English in in Israel, if I needed to know Hebrew to be there, but it was it was not so. It, they speak very good English in Israel, so the, there is no problems. The 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 problems is the signs, the bus. To take the bus and the train that it says in Russia and Hebrew, not English. So it's hard to find a way to to the bus and the train where, what train to take, for example. Uh, but I'm not going to, uh, uh, I can't take the bus and not the train because it's going so too fast for me. I I have hard to walk up on the train even if it's very low. Is it still a stair to take down and up? And I can't take one step up or down. So it is Either is it taxi or I have to walk in in Jerusalem, and, um, and no one has coming. Uh, they no one has say that they will help me in Jerusalem, and uh, no one in Jerusalem are listen at this podcast, and uh, so. They don't want to know me because they want to earn much money on this group, big groups of people. And um, the, I understand that because uh, it's not like here in Sweden that uh, we get money even if we don't work. So, we got money from the government, uh, but in Israel they have to work for to survive, to could rent apartment and eat and all the things. So I understand that, um, but it it must it can't be like uh, is so dramatic that. They want money in everything they do. That uh, is the devil that have caused them to do these things because it need to be some time when they can do something for another person without to get paid. And, uh, and all the, uh, I understand it as a human, but. If they believe in God and and doing things 
for God, then they should do things that is not to get money from, that they do, they help people because of their heart. Uh, so you understand the difference that I see it. It's not only to hunt for money. The life is not about that. God is not money. And if you really do what God wants you to do, he give you money. He has given me money. So why should he not could give you money? Now I am talking, I am not talking about you you that send me money, that I am very thankful for that you do. But there is money coming in that there is no name for, or where it's coming from. The, the special money I got, it was when I... I told told a man on Facebook that uh, he was playing in a lottery, but I say that I should travel and live in Israel if I got the money from the lottery. I say to him, and immediately, five minutes later, I had money on my bank account. From Nazareth, it says, and it was no real name on it. It only say it come from Nazareth. So maybe if someone have sent me those money, uh, that person means that uh, Jesus was sending money. Uh, but it uh, it is of course people's heart that's sending money and the fear for God not only I understand that it's not only I have to talk a little fast here it's hard to talk you fast when I English is not, is not my first language I speak Swedish so, but there, there is a spirit that want to come through. So his, his soon here. I feel his coming, and um, so I. It's hard. Uh, I forgot what I should say to you, but it it was. Uh, I got. Got. Um, in not a knowledge, but something to uh, think about that about this that I have been on my own for so long time was it, and it uh, uh, it can be with uh, not with God to do it's about. Uh, those that is in heaven, my ancestors, that make me not have hard to find a man in my life. In uh, year 2010, did I was I with a man for one year, almost exactly one year we were together. And but he didn't believe in God, and uh, he was only with me to be with me to have sex. And at first, I I wanted because it was a long time since I had a man in my life, and he he looked okay. He was slim and well built and everything. But he, he was not the smart guy. And he didn't believe in God. So when, when I maybe have told you this, the, 
but one morning we were sitting and eat breakfast. A voice, very clearly voice, say to me, are you going to be sad or are you going to cry if, if he will not be with you anymore? That was a voice say that very clearly to me. And I say to, to uh, me, my boyfriend, did you hear that voice? Because it was so loudly. So I was thinking that he maybe heard it also. Uh, no, w- what did the voice tell you? And I, I say that to him. And he laughed because he didn't believe in God. So he thought I was the one that uh, was uh, thinking like that and told him. So, but then later that day, he make strange things. And uh, we break up already after... And maybe it was um, 8 o'clock in the morning, we sit and eat breakfast. And then uh, about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, we break up. And uh, it was gone, our relationship. So uh, that can make uh, this, uh, that one that was talking to me, it, uh, I think, I don't remember it very well, but I think it was a woman's voice that asked me if I should be sad. So that, uh, I think uh, they wanted to hear from me if it was okay to let him go. And I... I did uh, let him go because I say that uh, I don't want to have sex anymore. It, uh, it's a stop for me, I say. I feel it's a stop. I don't feel anymore to have sex with you. I say to him, he didn't. He was not in to marry me. It was... Uh, wrong to do it but in some way I got a rest one year from to be by myself and I needed that uh, one year rest Uh, and he left and and be angry you and your God he say and then he left and uh, and I was okay Uh, uh, but he come back and did the uh, angry thing on me. But uh, after a while he he understood it. Uh, I never go back to him again. So so uh, twenty ten I had had a man for one year. Uh, so it is not 22 years since I had a man in my life. It's uh, 12 years. And uh, it started to be this way again that it's um, I can't uh, live, live alone. And uh, especially when I'm growing older and who should take care of me? No one take care of me. And uh, of course he can uh, be sick and, and needed me more than, than I need him. But at least we are together in these situations. I don't have anyone that uh, looking after me and want to hear uh, my daughter start to uh, to call me on the chat uh, more now because uh, 
uh, that uh, woman that her father is together with, that lived together with him. Uh, she don't want him to be so much into his daughter. So my daughter don't get the money anymore that she had before. Now this woman uh, tell him to not give my daughter any money. So now is am I okay to to call? Uh, and uh, she start to understand that I have money uh, if I want to do something here in Sweden, uh, something here in my city uh, that I have money for, but I can't go, uh, I can't uh, I, I fly to Israel without any help because that money I don't have. And so I have said that sometimes in, in my podcast that if God wants me to do something, he makes sure that I get that those money to do it, what he tell me. And it, it's not uh, that he he have standing in front of me and say to me to go to Israel. It is what it is now when the spirits are coming. Um, and some do I see a little of, but the many lately I don't see them. I only get the telepathy from them. I know they are around me, but I can't see them. Uh, but and they sending me telepathy. Uh, so there is nothing here. It's only that I feel a presence uh, coming through, and um, and it. Uh, it is not anymore like it must be a, a person that I see f for me to listen at them when they are talking. It doesn't matter anymore because I know they exist. And uh, if it's they showing me a body, if they want me to to understand better what's good, what they want to say. But if there is nothing that needed to be showing to me, for me to understand it, they don't do that anymore. So they, um, they only sending telepathy. And uh, so uh, many times, we maybe say that uh, God told us or God wanted me to do these things uh, but uh, more and more I, I I come to understand that that those in heaven also have a will and they can do things even they have to go through God to do these things, but they can ask God, and He say yes. Tell her this, or do these things, so she do it, uh, and these things. It's a. Uh, they have much uh, power in heaven to change our our life, and so. Uh, it's um, it says in the Bible about to to, to deny uh, the spirits or make fun of the spirits. It's very important to take it serious. What they are uh, telling you in the spirit way that you should not 
laugh about. Um, I laugh sometimes when they are saying, but that's because they say fun things. Not uh, that I laugh at them because I think it's stupid. I, I laugh because it's fun things they are saying. Uh, it, a, little, a little like the, it surprised me that they are saying what they are saying. So they, I'd be so happy when, uh, this morning I saw that it was someone have downloaded 172 episodes and that's from Ohio. So you you understand it uh, more. I have in many countries people that listen, but it's very few that download the the whole podcast, and so that um, encourages me when you do that, and. Um, so it uh, I know because um, Richard uh, that I was together with uh, when I was homeless in United States in 2000 2003-4 uh, his mother believed in spirit she uh, she was in a spirit church and I have been a, a member of a spirit church in England and um, I did it one year but it it uh, was a little uh, something that was negative there so I didn't want to be there because they didn't understood that I get real contact with heaven. Uh, it's these psychic uh, people that do this, uh, telling people about their loved ones in in heaven. Uh, they they are talking. They are not talking from heaven. They are talking from the spirit. It's. Uh, it's a little different, but it's hard to understand the, the difference because uh, sometimes it's that they come in through and talk to you personal to you, uh, and but it's very seldom they do that. It's things from heaven uh, told, and that that is not the same thing as those television programs because that's when they talking from from heaven of a, a person that have died and then they talk to their children or ancestors or or they don't talk to anyone more than they don't like people to be in their house because they think they still are in the house and those things and it can be very evil people that coming through also and talking to them and this is not what's going on in this podcast this is from heaven and and 95 percent is talking from heaven to those people that uh, that uh, hear it and know it's me they are talking to it uh, it's not only one person they talking to they talking uh, many of these messages talking to many people in once, um, it's 
It's uh, depend on how they are talking, and you know the different difference you that don't love the 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 whole podcast, and you know that the podcast it maybe doesn't exist uh, anymore because I maybe not uh, I know maybe not paying. For the podcast to be there, I will we'll see what's happened in Jerusalem and, and when I'm coming back. I don't uh, give up the podcast and websites and these things, but uh, the money I have now is for uh, Jerusalem, so I can't I can't pay the bills. That uh, that is for my podcast and my websites and those things that is for you to hear. So you need to download episodes to listen at it later on or whenever you you feel that you need to have this contact and uh, because it can suddenly be stopped because uh, I, uh, first I pay the bills for the hotel and for food and to travel and many things that that is coming that is bills and I pay that first before I pay do I have money left over uh, when I am coming back to Sweden then I then I pay of course the bills but if I stay in Israel I I maybe have no no money for to pay pay the bills and I have to give it up or oh, everything uh, and do it in another way uh, what God want me to do, what heaven want me to do instead of a podcast. I don't know what they are going to do. I I have no clue. I only know that I have to go to travel to Jerusalem and be in a hotel and then uh, touch the Golden Gate. Then I don't know more. They have to tell me what I should do when I'm coming there. I have no clue. It's really true. I don't lie about it. I only know that I'm, I have to uh, lay there in the hotel. And then I try to take contact with them and ask what they want me to do. In Israel, because it one month, and those uh, at the uh, the hospital have not say anything to me, so I I think it will not be anything with doctor to do. Uh, but I'm going to. I told you that I'm going to uh, Shabbat. Um, meeting places and and uh, if God wanted uh, I will meet a rabbi that will help me to de- get this hospital things uh, but I uh, have I have met the rabbi before I have told you in Tel Aviv I, I met the, the highest rabbi in Israel and he sit with me and we were praying together but he didn't help me and uh, it happened maybe one year later that he had to go they kick him out from from the synagogue to be I don't know where he is today but he had to leave Tel Aviv.
and leave the synagogue, leave the rabbi title. Uh, I don't know if it was because he didn't help me. I sit at his side and it was only he and me and he was talking to me. But he, like all these men that I, I talk to, and they ask me, why, why am I by myself in Israel? Why are you here? Uh, coming from Sweden, where are, why are you here? And then I tell, tell them that God has told me to go, uh, to take the flight to Israel. And uh, they laugh at me. They don't believe me. So the it if God make someone coming close to me, the a rabbi coming to me, he, I have to be prepared that he will laugh at me. That it doesn't he doesn't help me. And I, no woman help me either. But I need to go there because I feel that I should go to that place and then in the daytime I, I go around in churches and try to get contact with those leaders in in those religious places in Jerusalem so that uh, what I uh, I I have to ask him, him, the, his his he remind me that I have asked him to get the answer. What what will be in Jerusalem? Um, if it's going to be the end of my life in Jerusalem. Or if it's, I'm going to meet someone in Jerusalem that want to be with me. And uh, uh, he, he, the word he's saying is marching on, he's saying. And uh, that uh, seems not good because the marching on is hard military things going to happen. And uh, they don't want to uh, tell me what the future will bring. They don't want that. Uh, they take step by step with me. So there is nothing I can do and it doesn't matter for me. Really, it doesn't matter because I know where I'm going. If I be killed and I have asked them if I should be killed, it should go very quick. Not laying in a bed and suffering. Let it go very quick like it was when the car drive over me I have I don't remember what happened I only remember that I wake up in in the water on the street sitting and uh, have some pain in my arm and uh, not could walk up from from the water on the street and uh, that I remember that I was laying under the car and I remember the smell of, of the car on, on the, under the car and he drive away without wondering what happened with me and, uh, and it took 40 minutes for the ambulance to come because I asked where is the ambulance? And they say they have called and uh, and I heard him, uh, 
people talking. It took so long time to get the ambulance. So it it's only a few memories. But the, when the car drive over me, that's gone. I don't remember that. And I hope it's be like that if I have to to leave this planet when I am in Jerusalem. I don't know. It can happen that this uh, UFO that is coming uh, in Jerusalem, it have been UFO in Jerusalem before and over the, the city, but it they take it away, the, the military or the police, and say it's nothing, it was a balloon or something, they say. So they, they don't want the newspaper to write so, uh, so much about it. So they, they, they take it away the talking about the UFO but I know the UFO is there and like God is there and like heaven is there the UFO is also there so it can happen that they are coming down in Jerusalem and want me to come with them I have that, those visions I have those visions uh, about uh, going up in a, sp a spaceship and be in this spaceship. So it, it's not, uh, I've been not uh, frightened or shocked at all if it will happen when I'm at the Golden Gate. That, uh, in the sky it's coming, the UFO, and take me. It doesn't matter. I have seen all of these things. So, that is... I, I don't know if he want to say something. It's a very tall, slim person that is here. He's, um, the, color, the color of this person is uh, two courses, light two courses, and a little white and uh, silver color on his dress and the whole him. I don't see his face. I only see that uh, energy that he stand uh, for what they have. Is it something you want to tell people before I close this episode? I say that um, we are ready for you. He's saying that to me. And they, he say to me that they have the control over everything. So I should not be worried, frightened. Uh, it will be okay. Because it's in their interest that it will be okay, everything. So that's uh, my relationship with them. If they want me to come to Jerusalem, I will come to Jerusalem. So I thank you for, for letting me know that and that you hold it that. that. Uh, that I will come to Jerusalem. So I'm not um, stressed of that it's one week left. I have been 
I have taken a flight on my own to Africa. I have been to United States. I have been to Portugal. I have been to Israel four times. And I have done many things. So why should I be worried this time? So thank you for listening and um, and God bless you and we love you. All of us love you that follow this podcast and listen to what episode you want to listen at. Thank you.